with a representative from the MHRA to explain to them why they use cannabis, why they're having to use it in the illicit manner, why they're having to grow it themselves, some of them, um, and, and why they want it on the NHS and, and why it should be on the NHS by our GPs prescribing it. Um, so, and we're seven years down the road, after it being legal for three years, or coming up three years, um, boy, it is three years, uh, and, and there's still only three prescriptions. And then we've got the kids, <laughs> just beggars belief, the kids, are just, they're not getting their, their epilepsy meds, and it uh, and adults alike, obviously, but it, it's, it's the government's failure, it's everyone's failure who's in this industry. And that's the thing, you know, it's, uh, you have to question how, you know, they've seen the videos of little Billy and all, all, all the little kids that, you know, like, as soon as they have their cannabis meds, you know, they're, they're stopping their, their convulsions, their epilepsy fits and all this here, and it's like, mm-hmm. how, how can you deny, sit and deny these people? It's, it's a failure. It's a failure in with, with, the, um, with the health and social care people and, you know, whoever's in charge in Parliament with the NHS, uh, to push this through, to push the training through, through the Royal Colleges. It's a failure of the Royal Colleges. It's a failure of the system that keeps saying it needs a double-blind placebo trial. We don't give children placebos <laughs> when they're having a seizure. And those that think it's okay need to give their head a good wobble. It's disgusting. It's just, it's just disgusting, okay? And, and the fact that we've got all these specialists, over 70,000 of them, who still haven't had their ECS training or have not bothered to go and do it themselves, tarnishing their name specialist, because that name presents itself and that you know everything, okay? Yeah. Or, or you're meant to be a specialist in this pain. That re- so why haven't you looked into cannabis in the last three years? Yeah, well, yeah, why are you standing on your head? You know, why Why have you not looked at what's coming and what should be coming? And why have you not campaigned so that everyone can have a safe option? And if they think it's not safe, well, that's because of the government's fault. That's purely down to the to the Home Office. That's down to the, you know, to all those departments that keep saying cannabis is bad when we've got alcohol in the streets, when they prescribe fentanyl to people. When, do you know what I mean? It, it really makes my blood boil. It is because there's some serious class A drugs out there that are just handed out like every week, just daily they're handed out to people. Not not a word so about when them. You got, when you go to Parliament and you've got sick people protesting who have got a legal cannabis prescription, a Charing Cross police or whoever the place are that, that are in that region are coming over to you saying it's fake, cannabis doesn't exist as a medicine, and all the rest of it, it's disgusting. It's government's fault. Okay, it's Savage Javid's fault who set the law up in the first place. It's the Home Office's fault for not changing these. You know, change, we've got three different schedules of cannabis. It's outrageous for the same thing Schedule 4, Schedule 5, Schedule 2, for the same flipping plant. You know, it, uh, you know, for 23 days' time, it's going to hit the fan. For a very lot of people, you know, for a lot of people, 2,000 plus patients are going to face these massive hikes, okay? And they're, set, they're getting ready now. They're stressing now that they're going to have to get ready to grow. They're going to have to try and line up. You know, I know people now that have been ringing me up. Do I know anyone that, in this area? Do I know anyone in that area that can help? And because they've got, they're not going to be able to afford to pay these prices. They just can't do it. They but then, do it. but then also, what we're going to see now as well, um, when this, when this, when this um, energy hike does happen in April, there's going oh. to be so many people as well that that do sell on the back streets, and their prices are going to go up, go up as well. So they are. Well, we can only wait and see. I mean, at the moment they're overpriced anyway. We know that. Um, we know that. Uh, 21 pence a kilowatt hour that if you're doing a three foot by three foot with a couple of plants in there you're going to be doing what 67 pence a gram okay these boys that are doing this on max with hundreds of plants using they're not even using led lights a lot of these ones there they're illicit they're going with the cheap stuff get you know they're going with the, the cooling 
the the, the old bulb light things they use them still. The HPS. Um, yes, the, the H. <laughs> I forget that. Um, but they're using HPS still. I've seen, uh, all the pictures I've seen of of busts recently is still using all the old kind of technology. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then they're, so they're, they're robbing the electric and most of the big and most of the big ops. Right? Yeah, exactly. So they don't give a crap either. So you know, this is why we need. You know, this is why we need to change all this. But um. You know they're making, you know, for them it's pennies per gram, so they're they're having it off. So technically, it it, it shouldn't go up in that way, um, and and the price hikes that we got with the fuel is, is, you know, it didn't need to be that way. It's a political choice. Yeah, well, like the 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 made twenty three billion in the last three months, so it's like <laughs> there's exactly. a price hike going no, up. Just, that shows you everything. Hey, listen, if anyone knows anything about anything, that that tells you straight away the corruption that's going on. <laughs> you know, you've got to be, you've really got to be dead from the neck down not to realise what's going on. You just, you know, you can't because be, no one's... 23 there, billion you know, is some dollar so it is, man. Do you know what I mean? That is of course money. it is. You know, in three it's months. Massive, just think of what that could do. Just think what that could do. Just think of the offshore tax evasion is more than that per year. It's over 120 billion. Just, just with what goes offshore that doesn't get stay in this country. So you know, uh, and, and people are worried about a benefit cheat. So it makes you laugh. Do you know what I mean? Go, just, are you what? It's, uh, it's the priorities are all wrong. People's brains are screwed on wrong, and they're still loving the party they voted in, standing on their own kids' heads in a lot of cases. Yeah. They're, you know. I'm looking around thinking, what can we do? Who do we talk to? You know, who do we go to? Because how many of us have written to our MPs and got shit replies? You know, most of us. Okay. Um, they're willfully withholding the future. They're willfully helping people. I think maybe what could be a good thing done, um, maybe like sort of like a blog set up that would just have templates to send off to you know MPs a template to send well, off to funny you should say that. Well, no, I've looked around. Okay, I've looked around, and the only organisation see, there used to be one organisation that used to do all this, but they got screwed over by a certain group of people that we won't talk about. Okay, and since then you've now got all these different organisations. Used to be under one roof, uh, uh, and that included Grow Your Own and everything to give people the equal choice and their right of choice. Um, uh, as well as, you know, parents have the time to do all that. They need their medicine from a doctor, from a GP. They don't have to muck about. It gets put on the repeat so that they don't ever run out of supply so their child can have a normal bloody life. I mean, how hard is that? So, you know, I mean, they do it with every other drug, so why can't they do it with cannabis? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, you know, they talk about we need enough info- we need more information. We'll do a rolling trial like you've done with COVID. I mean, that's so they'll, they'll bring out any 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 of the prescription drugs, but you know, but there, there won't be the same amount of years research that they're you know see, seeking on cannabis. Basically, it's like well, <laughs> I mean, we have got a problem with the prices here. It's a big problem. It's a massive problem. It'll be a problem for the NHS to a degree, um, especially at eleven pound and twelve pound a gram. I mean, who pays eleven and twelve pound a gram? Well, I can tell you who pays eleven and twelve pound a gram. About eight thousand people, right? Currently going private, they're paying over a five or a gram. So if they're quite happy to do that, they, it, it shows you that the target market for that sector is people with a bit of spare posh. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you know, think of these parents. I mean, some of them are doing quite well and they're struggling because of the cost of their kids' meds. I mean, when you're looking at thirty-two grand a year. For a child's medicine, uh, it's, it's obscene. It's an obscene amount of money. It shouldn't be that much. Okay, provide licenses in the UK, allow it to be grown on mass properly. Okay, for medicine, right? As well as uh, changing the rules so that there's a recreational market to remove to remove it out the hands of criminals. So you know it creates gangsters in that market, and anyone with a brain who doesn't understand those facts shouldn't be in any kind of power. It's a perpetuating. But then you look at the look at the, the health secretary that we have now, hasn't he? Was his, no. his previous um, thing? He was he was a banker for eighteen years. Like, all what's all what's he do? <laughs> what's, okay. what's an ex banker doing as the health secretary? <laughs> we exactly. You know, um, what's a multi billionaire telling people? What's a multi millionaire telling the poor cut back? Like, Hello, <laughs> do you know what I mean? He's serious, mate. He's just serious. 
Oh, well, we haven't got a secret money tree. Yes, you have. You just spunked 4.3 billion up the window. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So how can you say you ain't got a secret money? It doesn't exist. Okay, it's just a load of numbers on a calculator on a computer. So it's it's just hypocrisy. They know what's going on. They know it's willful. But you was you asked me a specific question about about templates and stuff. I looked around and End Our Pain website is the only one that has any kind of thing like that. Um, uh, the UPA used to be an organisation where you could have a chat with them and then set up a seminar with your um, practice manager at your GP surgery and give them some training on the ECS. Wow. Okay, now, uh, uh, drug science is kind of doing something not on that level in the sense of what I call grassroots local. They're doing it on a more bigger scale, like going to bigger colleges, universities. We need it in all the GP surgeries. We need we need our, our practice managers posting up pictures of the ECS. Um, our doctors need to be trained. Our GPs need to be trained on the ECS. We have to, as patients, we've got to try and force the issue with them. Now, we've got to try and take them leaflets to the practice manager or try and have some kind of chat, meeting, email with them so that we can discuss cannabis use for medicine, um, whether they, uh, so that they can advise their patients that when it is available, even though it's private, um, but also so that they can get trained themselves and then also campaign with their royal colleges because they're the ones who, you know, they're being governed by their royal colleges as far as I'm aware and the trusts uh, and we need to get into these places and start saying if you don't start learning about the ECS then our trust in you as a doctor of medicine is going out the window because something as fundamental as the ECS which you know most of us don't know about but something as fundamental as that shouldn't be dismissed by any medical professional of any kind of any description because it is fundamental to our health and I don't care what anyone says it really is. What we put into us is number one, and how we feed our ECS to promote uh, homeostasis is number two. And you, you do that through food, and you do that through through using cannabinoids in various forms. So and we haven't got access to that. We've only got access to it privately because the NHS and whatever restrictions are being put in our way by the MHRA, by NICE, and we've got other organisations that are all doing fantastic work, I don't knock any of them, but what we've got lacking is anything to push it politically and anything to push it on the the uh, medical professions. That yeah, so none of these organisations are really lobbying much. That, that, that's what you're well, saying or that's, that's what you're picking up? Re- that's the thing is, that's not their remit, though. You know, you've got, uh, End Our Pain are the ones, they are the only ones that have a big list of politicians on their thing, yeah? Well, uh, supporters, as they call it. Right? They've got a massive list of, of various politicians from the Asa Lords and from Commons, okay, from various parties. Uh, it's not enough. It's it's very few compared to the, the both sizes of the houses. Uh, and obviously, it's an uphill battle doing it. Um, but they need help. And the organisation that was set up to do that got, as I said, got trashed. You can only, we're lacking an organisation that's not just for the medicine, that's not, it all needs to be in house. Splitting it up kind of works to a degree, but it also discriminates. And it's a massive, it's a massive bit of discrimination going on because, uh, and, and it shouldn't be. It should, it should all be equal because everyone's suffering is no different to anyone else's. It's, you know, suffering is suffering, okay? Um, uh, and on any level, it, it can cause all manner of other problems on top of that. So... Yeah, we don't need that kind of suffering. We don't need that kind of division, and we don't need that kind of discrimination. And they don't probably realise they're discriminating, and they don't even probably realise it's being divisive. But it is um, because it's pigeonholing stuff. And in the big picture, we all need it. The kids need it. The adults need it because the kids grow up to adults. Okay, what happened when they're eighteen and nineteen and twenty? Did it stop? Do they still not? Do they all of a sudden don't need it? When they're when they when they're not a child, and of course they don't. They're also going to need it. So you know, I've got my I've got a granddaughter who's just been diagnosed with a form of epilepsy. Right? Her mum's got epilepsy, so my daughter-in-law's got epilepsy. 
trying to get them to look at cannabis is trying to look at rocking horse rat. They're too frightened wow. to because they're worried they're going to. They're too frightened to because they're worried that social services might step in and take the kids away from them. And that's what nearly every parent faces when they've got a child with epilepsy or a child with any kind of illness, including cancer, right? When they want to look at cannabis use as a medicine. Okay, even if it's CBD cannabis use because of all this, you know, prohibition that you get mental health nurses that think a CBD cannabis balm can cause a psychoactive effect. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry for you know, laughing. It's like saying if I sit in alcohol, if I sit in a bath of vodka, I'll get drunk. Do you know what I mean? If, I, if, I, if you do long enough, you'll get pickled. But um, you won't get drunk. But uh, it, it's not going to be much good for your skin either, that's for sure. So I don't advise anyone sit in a bath of alcohol, okay? So just get that straight. Uh, don't try this at home, folks, ever. But um, but that's that's the lack of knowledge we've got in three years from it being legal. We've still got people that believe that. So do you and know? Do you know? Like you know, obviously, doctors. Is, is it it's seven years at the study? Do you know how much about ECGs and that there they actually learn in that seven years? Well, I don't, haven't got a clue about the MHRA regarding that. I mean, the lady that came to see us, Baroness Molly Meacher, no longer deals with cannabis. She's dealing with end-of-life stuff now. So um, I don't know who's taken it. Obviously, Crispin Blunt probably would have took her place. Um, uh, and that's why he's running. He's heading up the GDPR group, is it? The Conservative Drug Policy Group or whatever. Uh, um what we need is a cross-party drug policy group. We don't need the Conservative one. We don't need the Labour Party one. We don't need the top. We need a group of like-minded politicians from all sides to stop lying to the public, okay, and say cannabis is as safe as well, it's safer than peanuts, for, for starters. Yes, it might have a very, very, very small population that might, and this is might, have a problem with it. Well, that's down to edgy. It is far less than those that are having peanuts. It's far less than those um, uh, with fish allergies. It's far less than those um, with any other compound. And, you know, in seven years, you know, there's, there's, there's 40,000 white papers on cannabis as uh, uh, studies and medicine and so on. There's enough information. We know enough. And I put it down to, I mean, Boris Johnson said the other week, oh, yeah, he's all for it, blah, 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 The MHRA's fault. I mean, he's going to blame whoever he is. He won't blame himself. Of course, that's a given. We all know that. But um, you think the lion toad would, would, you know, you've all, and, what, and where was the MHRA's voice in all this? Now, I look at some of these organisations, and they're affiliated to the MHRA. They're affiliated to NICE. So, so, so what's the hold up now? You know, we're three years down the road of it being legal. So what, what's the hold up? Is it, you sh you, is it the same old chestnut we don't know enough crap? Is it, is it what, you know, obviously the restrictions still on importation is going to be the way they are because it's an unlicensed drug. Licence it for crying out that. And then... But what, what is actually stopping them growing it here in the UK? I would imagine um, the cost, the cost because it's a Schedule Two drug, um, it's going to have to have certain security around it and certain arrangements around it. And because it's a medicine, they're going to use it for medicine. It's got to have all these extra restrictions added to it for its, you know, to make sure it's as it should be. Um, they can't. I don't, why they can't? It's just the cost of it. I mean, the license is cheap, isn't it? About four or five grand to, to get a cannabis license. Uh, looked on the government website, um, even for hemp. But it's all the extra hurdles you've got to jump through because it's a class or a, or a Schedule 2 drug. And that's, you know, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's just it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. It shouldn't be scheduled. It shouldn't be on the scheduling list, cannabis. It's the freaking plant to find out that. Okay, daffodils ain't on the scheduling list. And you can eat one of them and drop dead tomorrow. But I don't advise anyone eating daffodils, okay? It, but it's a fact. It's a poison. While you're sitting in your bath of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, don't light a fag, though, with that. Whew, it'd be a Roman candle then. But, um, yeah, it... it, it so do you I think, like, obviously, obviously social media is 
is a way for to get you know things moving and all that there but you know there's there's countless cannabis pages set up and all that there so like you know what 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 do you need to get do you think you need to get a, a group of people to actually join together and work and start pushing you know and, and getting people to I think they should all get together i think all groups from all walks from all um beliefs should all come together under one banner of some description uh, and um, campaign for everyone's right of choice and uh, and to campaign for the right for anyone with any illness to be able to use cannabis, not as a last resort. All this last resort rubbish is just, again, it, it comes under that prohibition rule again of hate, fear, division, and lies. Okay, it doesn't have to be divided in that way. It's a choice. Again, with the prices. Cannabis, listen, let, let's get this straight to anyone that's listening to this properly. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm just moving my legs. So I've been feet up. So for those that uh, uh, I can't see me, that's what I'm doing. Oh, oh. Um, so let's get this straight. There's, there's industrial units around the world that are on several floors that have got fish tanks and they're growing hydroponics. They grow food, right? Right. tomatoes, lettuce, cucumber, whatever, yeah? Uh, uh, the industrial, industrialised growing. It doesn't cost any more to grow. Uh, maybe a few pennies more to start up with. Obviously, the initial start-up cost would be, I would imagine, a little bit more because it's inside and it's all got to be kitted out and it's got to have the right uh, air, air flow recycled and water to be recycled and you, you know you've got to have all that equipment put in there it doesn't come cheap but um uh again it's still not out of this world to do you know because companies up in colorado can do it and various other places around the world so the point i'm trying to make is it doesn't cost uh you know 150 quid to to to, to grow to grow a field of flipping cannabis Yeah, so it's uh, the other thing is so so we did t we did talk about um, some organisations. Um, is it plea? What what are plea actually about them? Um, they're a patient led access group. Um, and they're affiliated to uh, NICE, the MHRA, and obviously drug science because they advise patients on where to get their medicine from, what's available, the types of clinics available. Where to look? They probably they liaise with the clinics uh, to so if there's any problems with the patient, so you can go to plea and say, look, I'm having a problem with my clinic. I'm not getting this right. And it just keeps happening. And boom, they're a they're a way to to go because 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 plea and these various other groups will sit down with them and have a meeting with these company like with uh, TMCC or uh, various other people. They'll sit down with them and they'll have and they'll discuss. Uh, problems that's ongoing uh, with access, with price or whatever, yeah? So you can moan at plea uh, and, 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 and say to them, you know, will you represent me and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but they're only going to be doing it with, from what I've read, and, and there's no, so if they want to correct me on this, they're welcome to. I've asked them, I've asked all these groups of what, 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 what can, what else can we do? What are they doing? How far have they got? What's holding them up? Um, and, and that kind of thing, yeah? Um, so I hope they do reply, and it's and it's not meant any way in any shape bad. My words might come across strong and blunt and forward, <laughs> and, and 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 it's because I've been campaigning for years and years and years, and I'm fed up with all this. So um, I, I'd like to know what's going on, um, and how far we're getting, and how we can push it forward. Because I'm I'm sick and tired of hearing this. Oh well, it's a new industry, and it's. It's, this is, we don't know enough, and, you know, they haven't been trained properly. Because when I look at these websites, that's what I read. I will, uh, but, well, why aren't you campaigning enough to get them trained? Why haven't, we need a grassroots thing to go around to GP surgeries, and it can be patient-led, okay? So you find out who the patients are in your area. I don't know where we're going to do that, through social media or through local, I don't know. The trouble is, when you go onto local council groups or local what I call um 
local town groups and stuff like that. The minute you work cannabis, you've got to have all the prohibition that's coming in, saying, oh, it's bad for you, and it's magic, it screws your brain. And so you've got the stigma still. You see where I'm going with that? So this is why a lot... But we've got to come together. We've got to find a way. UPA used to do this, right? So, the, as I said, you know, you could have a, a meeting with... Uh, this is what they've got to do. This is how I see it should be done, as, as a way forward, as another tool to push forward, to get our, our, our local medical representatives clued up, right? Because it's their duty of care, okay, that they're failing it, okay? It's the duty of care on the government that's failing their, their, their constituents and MPs. They're failing in their duty of care straight away, but keep dismissing it, keep telling us it's bad, okay? Oh, it's too harmful and it's dangerous. And well, well, let's talk about the good, should we, instead of the harm. Because, and let's compare the harms. To the other harms of other things, like alcohol, like tobacco, and, and so on. Yeah, I can go right into it, okay? And, and it, it, it just makes them look mugs, absolute mugs, when they come out with the same old crap. So, and, and the thing is, if and, and we must explain to them in the nicest possible way, without, without prejudice, that if they carry on with this narrative, then we're going to have to vote them out. We're not going to vote in people. We're going to actually insist that whoever comes and becomes elected isn't a prohibitionist that understands that every living vertebrate has an ECS and how it affects us and why we need to use it and why we need to feed it. And the only way to do it is by using cannabinoids or cannabinoids in raw acid form uh, as well as decarboxylate form. We shouldn't be uh, detailed from any shape, way, shape. We, we shouldn't be stopped from, in any way from having access to and, and three years down the line of medical cannabis, and you and I still can't get it for our GP, just shows the corruption. Because it is corrupt. I don't care what anyone said. It's as corrupt as it gets. And that's why, you know, we're going to turn up uh, on the 25th again, on Feb, um, and I've asked all groups to come together uh, uh, and shout, have a day off. Okay, they might filibuster it again. So what? That's what campaigning is. Okay, that's how you win things eventually. If we don't win it on that day, um, then we'll have to go again and do it another day. But by not having a show of people and a show of hands and a show of force, it just sends the message that you know people don't care. You know, and people do care, and people should care, and it should be able-bodied people as well as just the disabled that get up and do this. I'm sick of the it, I'm sick of the fact that it is just the majority sick people that are doing this. It's just the few and not the many of able-bodied because it's their loved ones it affects. Yeah, you know, so it affects them just as much. There's no organisation out there now that was doing exactly what UPA were doing. Was they seem to be well, covered to some wide is. scale of things, weren't they? I, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I mean, you've got, I know we've got See Their Future. They're doing something in their way. Obviously, WTU has been destroyed by, by the few people who, who are supposedly doing good in the community. Well, if you just destroyed a man's life, that isn't doing good to anyone, is it? I mean, there's nothing proud to be proud about that whatsoever. So, um, yeah, so uh, you've got plea, you've got End Our Pain that are doing fantastic work. You've got uh, MedCan Support, who, again, are a, a new organisation. They've only been going since it was made legal. Um, and... Uh, someone might correct me on that as well. Uh, they're welcome to do so. So, um, again, looking on their website, it's very little lobbying being done. Very little, you know, because we've got to attack the people that are writing the laws. We could, MHRA, how do we get hold of them, right? You can email them, but they'll moan at you that you ain't got a complaint, so they'll email you back saying we don't matter, right? So we have to rely on people like Plea. So how are they getting on with the MHRA in the last three years? What's happening with them? Because it's their patients and because it's patient-led, that means the people that are running it are sick people. So, you know, you can't knock that. Um, it's going to affect them with these price hikes. How are they going to manage it? They've, what it seems to me is they put all their eggs in one basket and now it's come home to roost. Not, and that's nothing bad. I'm not having a dig at that. That's just how I see it, sitting on a fence. It's like, well, what's your backup? Where's your backup plan? Okay. The backup plan is the MHRA, and nice. Why are they making it so restrictive? Remove the restrictions. Why are you still holding out? We've got all these patients that are getting it monthly, over 2,000 right, currently on the MH, on, on the uh, um, on the drug science scheme, and then you've still got another six or seven, 8,000 people on top of that that 
uh, getting it privately too. Do they not count? Do you know what I mean? It's just it just flies in the face of just hypocrisy. Yeah, so like obviously with the the price hike that's going to happen as well, um, there's certainly going to be a lot a lot of patients are going to be like stepping away from the medical side because obviously this price hike is going to like have people back trying to get get it cheaper on the streets or trying to grow their own. So I reckon there will we be a, we... a serious drop in the medical cannabis side of things. Or what do you think? Well, I, I just. Well, I, I think because they've got this backup of all these other patients that are not on the T21, it's not going to dent them too much. Right. Now, okay, it might be between, I don't know how many clinics, there are, I don't know, 12, 15 clinics. Um, uh, uh, you've got, um, say, say 2,000 patients that are using, say, a, a split between all them clinics. Let's say they had, let, I know they're not, and some people might go, oh, well, that's not the same, doesn't mean a bit. It could be up to a million pounds a month that they could be losing in prescriptions and cost of medicine. Wow. Okay. Um, now, that might not be nothing to them because they've still got another six, 7,000 patients uh, that are not getting it through T21. So I don't think it's, they're, they're bothered. I really don't think they're bothered. They're weather the storm. They've got their markets going in Chile, Kieron, and their other markets. You've got the Canadian markets. You've got their customers still in Canada, Germany, and the rest of Europe. And, and so, I, I, you know, Advent the same, the Australian companies the same. It's not just the UK, they're selling it too. There's other markets as well. Uh, and I just think it's the price is just a joke. It shouldn't cost any more than a pound of tomatoes for a pound of cannabis when it's grown industrially. It's as simple as that. And if anyone wants to correct me on that and explain to me exactly why, right, that they're charging what they're charging, then do so. Send me the details, right, and then we can look at this in another way. But I'm telling you now, Right. If, if they can't, there's a shortage. Apparently, there's a global shortage from what I've read through various sources of cannabis use for medicine currently. They can't keep up with demand, from what I'm told. Now, let's face it if the, because, the, the, you know, I'm answering my own question there because I knew the answer anyway, but I wanted to see what other people would say. When I say, why haven't these companies hoovered up the 1.4 million patients still going to the illicit market? Why haven't they done that? Oh, I can tell you why. They couldn't supply them. They haven't got the supply. Right? They haven't got the supply for the patients they got now properly. So how are they going to be able to do it with 1.4 million patients? It's just it's not, not going to happen. Now, if someone wants to drop me a note and say, hang on, mate, yeah, this is how they do it, do so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know how they can do it. But uh, but they won't allow that. Right? They've, they've got to, and I don't agree with a license for a patient to grow. I don't agree with a license for anyone to grow for non-profit. Right? So if you're going to grow it and you're going to profit from it, you're going to sell it and you're going to market it, and you're going to bump, then you've got to pay a license like an off-license does or like a, like a brewery does and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to grow it for yourself, for your medicine, or just for yourself, no license, don't need one. We don't want a license. Well, why make bureaucracy when it doesn't need to be? Okay, it's rubbish. Right? It's, it's rubbish. Slap yourself with a wet kipper. Or no. Don't, don't want to work the kipper. Slap yourself with a big wet leaf and, uh, uh, and, and, and don't be so stupid thinking that way. Okay, so, yeah, just the tax generation from a legal market would, would suffice, plus the, the less uh, place money that would be used in the judiciary uh, or, or the less money that would be used in the judiciary per se with the police forces, the prison service, the court system, solicitors and all the rest of it for, for that kind of crimes will plummet. And all they'll say is save so much money in the NHS. Uh, you know, we know, you know, I'm not talking to the preach, really, because we already know this. It's yeah, just yeah, those yeah. Those that true. don't, those that don't, and, and they're wondering what's going to happen next month. Well, you've, the system that we've written has let you down. So who do people, like, obviously, like, next month, people are going to, like, notice this price hike. Um, who do they actually send their complaints off to then or is there well, we've got to send the well drug science obviously because they're is their partners because i read on their web page today that I, I wish i had the words in front of me because it's kind of hypocritical um because they're saying they're independent and all of us well they're not they're independent from political and commercial that's it well no they're not because the commercial partners they've got supplying cannabis to us are, are pushing them to push it to, to force the price from five pound to seven pound so You've just mugged yourselves, drugs on. 
Okay, now if you want to correct me on that, please do, because I'll be at Parliament on the 25th and so come and have a chat. I've got no problem with you. I was going to scream and shout at them, but I don't see the point. Okay, it, it's their partners that need screaming and shouting at. But to say that you're free from political and commercial, um, uh, what's the word, uh, sway, uh, is bollocks when you're going from five pound to seven pound a gram. Okay, so. That's my perception of it. If someone wants it correct, may do so. So, um, yeah, they're stuck between the rock and an old place, drug science. I don't knock them. They stood up and counted for us when it was needed to get the thing rolling. It all, it seems, I mean, a lot of patients have to be going, oh, no, 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 no. I, I do, to a degree, feel that um, it was definitely held back. Obviously, COVID's held it back. Um, that's held everything back, though. Uh, so we can't just blame COVID for it. Um, they brought it to the front and they've allowed a set of guinea pigs to prove that there's a medical market for it, okay? Whether it's private, I mean, at the moment, it's proving to be quite um, a profitable thing for the private companies. They're charging anything above fucking five pound a gram. Excuse my French, you cut that out. You bleep that out. But, uh, uh, you know, it. <laughs> When I looked at the prices this week of all the different ones on all the different formularies, I just shook my head. £12.50 a gram, £10.50 a gram, £11.50 a gram. I was like, yeah, you really? <laughs> no. Nah. You know. And was it, was the, a gram. Were there any sort of like exceptional um, strains or anything at that price? Was anything No, there's or... nothing. Listen, it's cannabis. It shouldn't. It's, it's, it's a plant. There's nothing exceptional about my bananas, is there? <laughs> or my Rayburn apples. There's nothing sort of exceptional about my um, different, three different types of spinach I grow. <laughs> apart from it, it does what it says on the tin. It's this is the this is the hypocrisy. This is it's oh well, this strange the one that's worth all the money. Oh, it's magically got something better than something else. Then, and it has to, and because of that, you can justify charging from five pound to twelve pound fifty. Like, you're tripping, mate. Right? <laughs> piss is piss. Right? Okay, flour is flour. All right? It's as simple as that. It, it, it's just, it just shake yourself, patient. So all of you that are paying over the odds, you should be screaming at your consultant, going, "Listen, mate." It's twelve pound a gram. You haven't. Oh, it's top quality. It's all. Listen, mate. Forget your sales pitch. It's a plan, right? Okay. Fucking twelve pound fifty. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, but uh, as, as as we said, like the people who are paying the twelve pound fifty. You know, obviously that's a, a different target range. That sort of is um, to what me and you, you and the, the working miles used to. Wow. Well, Listen, uh, it's never going to be top shelf, okay, ever, right, unless you grow it yourself. Let's get that straight, okay? Anyone that knows about that knows that, all right, period, okay? Anyone that grows food in a garden knows you cannot beat the apple you pull off your own tree, right? Or I, th the I, I you think if you're growing your own flower as well, it's like you, you, you get to use every part of the flower as well, so you do for various things, you know, obviously the leaves. If, if those that know how to do that, obviously will, with those that don't, can compost what they don't know how to use, and then it gets recycled that way. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's never, ever going to be wasted. It's never You're never going to be putting anything in the dustbin or in the council bin to be taken away. You're going to be reusing it. And the only reason if you do do is if you're in a flat and you haven't got a garden and you've yeah, got a yeah, very yeah, small yeah, yeah. kind of property where you... You know, where you basically you can't grow. You know, you might be able to grow one plant if you like. You know, you know, right, right, right down to our very roots can be used. So, you know, and as you say, then the bit of soil, yeah. you can you know, put it in a little pot and put a plant in it or whatever, do you know what I mean, in your house, whatever. Yeah, very much so. Uh, there's, um, uh, it's, just, it's just a wonderful plant. And it's just, you can see why, well, sort of why they make it illegal. It's like uh, the power that the plant has. There's no other drug out there that can touch it, basically. Well, there's no other plant out there that can plant, give you stuff. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, you know, you you get 50,000 uses from hemp, you know. I mean, that's just something that grows eight foot tall, <laughs> as thin as, I don't know what, you know, proper sativa, big long nodes between them and all that. Yeah, that's just, that's giving you all the fibre you need, your rope, your, you know, the cleaning the soil, because it, it grows so fast. Well, just look at auto plants. You stick a field full of auto plants in a contaminated field, okay? They stick, stick, 
And people go, why auto parts? Yes, I'll tell you why. All right, because they will just grow, 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 and they'll grow fast. They'll be the fastest things. They'll grow faster than hemp. Okay, they, they, they'll just grow, 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 rip all the nutrients out, and they go, well, "That's a waste of medicine." Not really, because now we're going to turn that into hemp cream. We're going to keep hold of all those contaminants, and we're going to lock it up forever. All right, uh, and, and we're going to use it to 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 put to, to put in footings and to build roads with, and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, this is what this country is missing. We've got a cottage industry here where we could have hundreds of farmers up and down the country that are sitting on field and doing nothing. Okay, um, yes, some of it's wildlife, but you know, and they're sitting on you know leached. The fields are being leached with with contaminants at night for the rest of it, contaminating the water supply. Let's clean it up. Let's, you know, you've got to fallow a field in hemp for at least six months. You know, at least two seasons, um, and, and move that around your farm, and you'll have to clean this farm. Um, and that hemp that's got those contaminants in it, as I said, could be used for the building industry, um, where those contaminants are locked up forever. It's not hard. It could make it cheap. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just the will to do so, and there is no will to do so. Why hasn't the nation got solar panels on every south-facing roof? You know, why isn't it putting it in the white? I know people go, oh, yeah, we're in the southern hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere, and it, listen, it still generate electric. It, 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 even in the winter, it was still do it. But why haven't we got it? We should have done this 30 years ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, I, I spent nine months around South Africa, so I did. And I was like, I was always wondering, like, why isn't there massive, massive solar panels out there? <laughs> like, it's... Well, when I, I went to, I made a film in 2004, went to, um, uh, went to Italy. We did, uh, uh, um, uh, and then I went to, uh, I did another film in 2007 where I went to uh, the Czech Republic uh, on, on motorbikes with filming and stuff. Uh, and, and going through all the countries at the time, even in 2004, the amount of, Obviously, Spain, going through like the lower parts, coming up towards Spain and through Italy and uh, over the other side of um, uh, the Mont Blanc and all that, going off into Italy and everything. Um, the, the, the solar panels everywhere and the wind farms, right? Especially in Germany, I've never seen so many wind farms in 2007 when we went through. We went through um, Bavaria, went through, uh, uh, went from west to east and then into the Czech Republic. Um, and 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 over here we hardly see any now. Obviously, they're obviously offshore. There's loads of them uh, around the countryside. I'm seeing a few, especially like up Thames Valley now. I'm coming up through the River Thames. There's quite a few that are popping up, and rightly so because it's proper windy along. So we should be harnessing this. We should have wave generation going around. We're an island for Christ's sake. We're eleven thousand miles of island coast. So we should have wave generating machines everywhere. Um, you know, safer shipping to pass through, but we should still have those wave generations there because of the tidal system. We've got a tidal system, so we up all our rivers. So, yeah, the energy thing shouldn't be what it is. They shouldn't be having it off with the money, but then that's the country's fault for, for allowing it to be privatised for this long. You know, we, we reap what we sow, and, you know, 40 years later, we're reaping it. So uh, um, we've so got a magnetic... Go on. Um, just to finish things up. So the the uh, when's the next day? You are back at the House of Commons. Well, the next journey is the twenty fifth, provided that's not being postponed. I've had messages off of patients saying that coming there's going to be a lot of people there, and supposedly this time around, yeah, good, well done to all those that can make it. Obviously, those that can't, we do understand. But you know, there was less than fifteen, twenty people last time. Where was all the London? Where's all the uncanny people? Where's you know, they're easy to jump on a tube, on a train, on a bus to get into and Parliament. Surely this um, is, like, as you, you named loads of organisations through the, the, the conversation, surely these organisations should be there as well? Well, I, you would think. Now, I don't know. I would imagine I've heard that um, drug science are going to be there. I've heard drug science are going to be attending and another organisation. I don't know if PLEA are going to be there. I don't know if med cancer support are going to be there. They're the, the I'll name the four uh, that that everyone kind of looks at as their patient advocacy groups, which is I mean, uh, plea, uh, med cancer support, uh, end our pain, and drug science. Okay, I, I don't know how many of those are going. At least two of them are going, as far as I'm aware. Um, 
uh, see their future or probably have a presence there some description they did last time they was one of the people or two of the people three other people that uh, the last one so um uh and i don't know about you know uk csc if they're even going i don't know i don't know all these what we need we need all these groups whether they're for recreational whether they're for medical to turn up so we can get our kids to get our medicine right and not just the kids so we can campaign for everything just to get our medicine right we can still push for everything else. It's just that at the moment, this is kind of, you know, we've still got loads and loads and loads and loads of people suffering, both sides are suffering the criminalisation of one choice to choose, right? And also facing criminalisation for using a medicine, for medicine, okay? Or using it for specifically that purpose, even though, as we know, every bit of cannabis use is medicinal, of if you think it or not. So we need them all to turn up. We need them all to come together. We need these organisations to start promoting the 25th that they're going to be there, that they're going to help people, that they're going to campaign, that we're going to push this through Parliament so that we can get NHS access for our GPs. Okay. We want end our pain. We want, uh, 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 obviously, drug science. We want uh, med cancer problems. We want plea. We want everyone, from the from the hemp ones to through to the cannabis ones. Um because this is our rights, it's prevalent. It's three years down the road, the legislation, and the legislation is crap. It's not good enough. It will work if they remove the restrictions. It will work if people was growing it here uh, en masse so the supply would diminish. It will work if patients that could was allowed to grow for themselves to save them uh, having operators as well. Um, uh, that's what we need. That's what we demand. Um, uh, and that's what we've got to carry on demanding until we get it so thanks you know um that's all i can say i'll support them all i just we just need to have a show of hands and a show of people and we need to write to our mp so even though they're going to send us a crap letter we need to speak to our gp managers uh the surgery managers and have a discussion with them about some kind of ecs training for their doctors uh, and some kind of posters that they put up on their literature to say that cannabis for a medicine is available, even if it's for private use. Okay, I don't want to promote the private stuff, but for me, it's been very beneficial. Even though it's not been the best quality, it's made a massive difference just for the fact that I've got it legal, for my tenancy agreement, for the police station being up the road, and all the rest of it that goes with it. So... Yeah, we've got to push for this. We've got to push for this, and then we're going to push for the rest. So, uh, yeah, have a good one, folks, and I look forward to seeing those that turn up uh, and those that want to communicate with me via any other medium. So cheers, Rifty, and cheers, PCB, for having us. Yeah, so I suppose see their future in that there. They'll have a, they'll have a link up on their wall for the, for Parliament then, won't they? I don't know any other groups. Well, I'm, I'm to, be, to be fair, I, I don't use Facebook a lot. Oh, I don't yeah, go on right, it. Right, I, right. Uh, so I, I can't really discuss what's on that. Uh, I can only hope that people are promoting that it's going to be an event there and they turn up on mass. Yeah, it's like um, pe- pe- people, obviously you will just notice, but a lot, a lot of people were complaining on Facebook the last time that they didn't even actually know that, that it was happening until it was too late. And this is obviously all down well, to Well, I've, I've not organised this. I've not, I'm not the organiser of this. I've, I, I've called for people to come. Um, because I'm a patient and I'm going to go. Yeah. Okay, that's why I've called. I want some support. I want some people to stand with me as a patient, medicating outside Parliament with my legal prescription, waiting for the old bill to come and nick me so I can mug them, right, and, and, and say, look, you cart me off. There's going to be consequences for this, okay, it's because like I will, you know, I don't... It, it's mad because you have, like, Facebook and it's, you know, it, it is the biggest sharing platform in the world, but people still won't share stuff and it's like... This is why it doesn't get out in the Well, because of the thing. stigma. It's because, it's because, you know, we put stuff up about cannabis, they remove it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the bloody problem we've got. Even if it's medicinal, I can I can post up my, my medicine and they'll remove it. I can complain, they'll put it back. I say, this is my prescription. I mean, how dare you remove that? I'm not in breach of any rules, rights or anything. So um, put it back. And then they have to. By law, they have to. Because you could actually do them. Stick a commercial lean on 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 Bill Gat on on, on Zuckerberg. That was a joke. Man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. Cheers, man. Thanks very much, and enjoy the rest of the day. No problem. Take care, and I'll catch up with you soon, man. Bye bye. Yeah. 
Okay, Jesus. that was Kevin um, was uh, on PCB Radio um, doing a podcast. Um, I will be doing uploading this onto YouTube later on. Um, any questions that you need to ask about anything in the video, Kev will happily answer them. Volume up and down. Try to use your Facebook, you see. 